movieweb.com. You've done quite a few high concept uh, family films. And so when they come to you with G-Force, Commando, Guinea Pigs, what runs through your head? Are you thinking, genius, I have to do this movie? Uh, pretty much, actually, because the script was so good and because there's never been a guinea pig movie before and because it was a Jerry Bruckheimer film and you figure if it's a Jerry Bruckheimer film, everything's probably going to work out. So I was very happy. Uh, whatever the genre, if the script is of a certain quality and there are very few quality scripts around, then you kind of just turn up because they're rare and this was one of them. Um, you're one of the actors that I like who can play a tremendous, very diabolical villain, but then be very, very, very good comedically and very family friendly comedically. What what acting muscle do you use? I mean, obviously you're doing voiceover work here and some, uh, well, actually, no, you have a live scene here, but what acting muscle do you use when you go from being the villain to something more family oriented? Well, there is a kind of, uh, I guess it's just from watching movies, you know, when you were a kid or no, when you were growing or throughout your life. Uh, the muscle is hard to identify. There is a certain, there is a trigger, you, uh, a switch you throw in your head, which gives you, I guess it's something to do with timing and a general attitude, but um, it's, and it's a very narrow line between one and the other. It can be, which is one of the reasons why people find it, when they're doing, when they're doing very serious, like if I'm in, I'm in you know, vampire movies sometimes, like horror kind of things, uh, one of the difficulties there is keeping a straight face because the line between the two is very uh, delicate and it's easily uh, snapped. Well, let's talk about uh, working with uh, producer Bruckheimer. Um, when I saw the film two days ago and the film is such a huge film and it's so beautifully done and the 3D is incredible. Can you talk about the faith you have as an actor and someone like that having worked with him before? What does he really bring to your, to your projects? He gives me complete faith. I have complete faith. Uh, in a way that I, I don't know if I have, you know, there are a few people that if they call, you just go. It wouldn't ha I wouldn't have to ask any questions. I would just get on a plane because it, with Jerry Brookheimer, I mean, you figure everything's going to work out, not just when I've worked with him, but in other things that he's done. You know, he always delivers. And, I, on, and on the other occasions in the Pirates movies where I've worked with him, um, I did the last two Pirates movies, they, they were they, amongst you know, the most popular films ever made. And he has a gift, a talent for knowing what people like, for knowing what people want, and for making movies, as he says, that he himself would like to see. And his taste seems to correspond with much of the rest of the world. And they are movies that just make you feel better and they're exciting and they're informative and they're funny and they, you come out the cinema like you did when you were a kid and the deal is you feel better. So I'm always happy. I'm curious what you think about like uh, movie technology and where we're going as far as the audience you know, experiencing film. Uh, I was watching one of your more independent films a few years back I believe with uh, Kelly McDonald. It was a great, great film. And then I saw you and Alex Ryder and then I saw this film and I was thinking to myself, wow, oh, Bill has really done a huge gamut of, of cinema in general. Do you yeah. see 3D as being the standard maybe for family films? Maybe. I don't know. I know they have a new process, a new way of doing it. It was around when I was a kid, but it wasn't as efficient as it is now. Uh, and they've now found a new process for it. So it may become, yeah, it could easily become a kind of prerequisite. There are two or three movies out with this 3D process going at the moment. So it may be that uh, in order to stay competitive, everybody would have to have it if they can afford to, uh, to arrange it. So maybe, yeah, maybe it will be. Um, a quick question about how you work on, on special effects films. Um, classically, you go back to, to pirates and all the, the makeup and digital work that was done here. And in this film, you have the live acting role, but then you're obviously working with, I guess, green screen and other things. What do you find interesting about that process? Because I know some actors dislike it as opposed to being on theater and so on. What do you like about that? I don't dislike it at all. I don't dislike anything, really, in, as much, in acting terms. I mean, they're, they're just different technical considerations. Uh, I, you have to use your imagination pretty much in the same way as you did when you were a kid and you were playing games in the, in the backyard and, you ha and nobody, were, nobody came over to play to your house that day, so you had to make them up. It's, that's all it is. It's not anything, well, as far as I'm concerned, there may be people with other processes. I'm sure there are much more sophisticated, but as far as I'm concerned, it's pretty much what I did when I was a kid, and you just pretend. And it's fun, you know, it's just kind of cool. I don't mind uh, a green screen. I've got used to it now, you know. Um, but the process has moved on a bit now. You, you, there's less green screen. You are, you are integrated. You're allowed to go out into the, you know, into the acting community, as it were. You're allowed to work with the other actors. But on this one, there were occasions where you had to pretend that you were being attacked by 
I think, a photocopier, and there was no photocopier. I just think that's funny. I believe you're playing uh, Rufus Scrimgeour in the next Harry Potter film, The Deathly Hallows. I am. Have you filmed that part? Can you tell us anything about that? Yeah, uh, I film when I finish this trip, when I go back at the end of July. Uh, I play, as you say, the Minister of Magic. He's a wizard. He's called Rufus. And uh, I'm pleased, you know, because I figured I was the only English actor not to be in Harry Potter. <laughs> uh, and I thought that was going to stay the way, that, that stay the case, but in fact not. So I'm very happy to work. I know most of the people involved. I've known them all my life. I admire, there's a great cast, and I like the director tremendously, David Yates, who Brilliant. I think, who, who also directed the movie with Kelly McDonald, the one you refer to, the, yes. girl, the girl in the cafe. I interviewed him a couple of days ago. Brilliant oh, director, really? Oh, yeah. good, good. Well, I, uh, I, he's one of the best directors I've ever worked with. And, uh, that, and The Girl in the Cafe, I think, is probably the thing, one of the things that I'm most proud of. Uh, I've worked with him. I did, another, I did State of Play, the uh, TV series with him, and, an, and another thing with Jim Broadbent. So I'm very happy to be reunited, as they say, with him, and just to be a part of the whole thing. And to be, you know, and I'm a heavyweight guy. I'm the big, I'm the, I'm the big wizard. I'm the, I'm the, you know, I'm the minister. You know, check it out. Force in Disney Digital 3D. Oh, yeah! Whoa! Blaster, do something! What do you suggest I do? Hoop in his hand! Hoop in his hand! Jump, 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 jump.